So good evening, ladies. Today we are going to talk about how to prioritize wellness in a busy lifestyle. So as you all know, a woman's life, like from morning to evening, is full of responsibilities. Whether you will be working or you will be a homemaker, you know, it's all like many roles that we play in our day-to-day -day life, making our things or self-care the least priority. So today I'll be talking about things which can, you know, be tips to make wellness as your first thing in your busy lifestyle. So I'm Dr. Shanath. I'm an Ayurveda practitioner and a certified Smriti Meditation practitioner. So, so in the start, I would like to give you a piece of knowledge. Like, do you know like 70% of our health and aging? is determined by the lifestyle choices we make it today. How many of you agree with me? Or do you have this knowledge? Hi, Saroj. Yeah, so many people had responded in the chat box, but I didn't see it in the chat. Hello to all the beautiful ladies. Yeah. So how many of you agree with me? Do you think? 70% of our health and aging is determined by the lifestyle choices we make today. Okay, Veronica is saying that she didn't know. Raji is saying 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Actually, this is what researchers say. So, that shows that if we don't make time for our health now, we'll have to deal with it. Ill effects. So, today I'll be speaking about how, what all types of wellness are there and how we can prioritize wellness in our busy lifestyle and schedules. So basically, wellness is a holistic, multi-dimensional, active way of living. Okay. In this or through this, individuals become aware of how to make right choices for optimal health and well-being. So basically, it's like focusing on self-efficacy and self-care. So when it comes to an individual, individually, wellness means emotional, physical, spiritual, intellectual, social, environmental, and interpersonal well-being. So were you aware of all these types of wellness? I would like to hear, you know, what your what is your thought on wellness? What do you think wellness is? Or, you know, how much type, how many types of wellness or what kind of wellness? What do you think? What, what are your thoughts on wellness? Oh, am I not audible? Camilla is saying that she can't hear anything. Am I audible? Hello. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Daksha and Raji. Thank you so much for your support. Yeah, Sarah is saying being good to yourself. Oh, that's one beautiful definition for wellness, I would say. Yeah. So, ladies, today what I have to tell you is that you are here, which means that you have taken the first step towards prioritizing your wellness. So this is the first step that we need to take that we are trying to make or prioritize wellness even in our busy life schedules. So why wellness? Because life can be stressful at any point of time, right? How many of you agree with me? It's not, life is like a wave, right? It's a wave of happiness and grief and sadness and problems and then again solutions and problems and then again solutions. Do you agree with me? Or is it like, you know? How many of you agree with me? Thank you, Sarah. So, since life can be stressful at any point of time, it is necessary to maintain a multifactorial internal balance so that even if stressful events happen, you don't get affected with any sort of stress, internal stress or external stress that will lead to any sort of diseases. So basically, wellness is something which creates an internal 
balance within us so that it can prevent diseases and maintain our health. So, usually when we talk about wellness, people are like, you know, I don't have time. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to take care of these. I, I have to take care of my, you know, my in-laws, my parents, my kids. And the list goes like that. But tell me, how can we effectively take care for others if we are not functioning well? Right? So, all the time, prioritize yourself and self-care. Because lack of wellness or well-being can cause increased stress on the body. So whenever a stressful event is happening or incident is happening in your life, if your body is not well-maintained, when I say well-maintained, not just being fit, but also we'll be talking about the dimensions of wellness by which we can have an actual well-being. So if it's, it's not maintained, it can cause increased stress on the body which can lead to chronic diseases or even early death, which means that it can reduce the number of years of life from you, right? So the, now we'll be talking about the types of wellness. So when we say wellness, it's not just, you know, eating properly, sleeping properly, exercising, bump, over. No, there are many other dimensions to it. The first one, occupational wellness. So, when you are doing a job, when you are working. So I today in the session, like I'll be talking about both working women, you know, helpful tips for working women as well as homemakers. So if you're working, then working or wellness at occupation workplace means happiness and contentment with your job or the meaning and purpose of your work or your work ambition. It depends on the choice of your profession. If you're not happy with your choice of profession, that will affect you mentally, and that will affect you emotionally and then physically, which will lead to disruption of wellness or well-being. And also job satisfaction. If you are not satisfied with your work and your personal performance, all these things matters in your occupational wellness. Basically, it all will you know, reflect on the work life balance so there are many more points like time management you know avoiding procrastination all these things that we usually hear but definitely happiness and contentment with the job is an important factor that will affect our mental health and eventually the physical health as well so it's very important to have occupational wellness in your life then the next comes intellectual wellness now Tell me, what do you think intellectual wellness to be? Raji is saying we need to take care of everyone. Okay. Maybe, you know, before when we were talking about the other thing. Yeah. So I would like to hear about the thoughts on your intellectual wellness. What do you think intellectual wellness would be? Is there something like that? It is recognizing your creative abilities, learning something new, even indulging in smart conversations, which can build confidence in you, which can expand your knowledge and skill or reading a new book. All this comes under, you know, creating your ability and improving your knowledge and skill. That's how we'll improve our confidence. And that also affects our physical, mental, and social health. So this is the type of intellectual wellness. Then the next is spiritual wellness. Now, everybody as a person, we need to have a purpose in our life, right? We need to have a meaning for our life. We need to have a purpose for our existence which includes our morals and our ethics, our beliefs, our values, you know, all the alignment of our actions. Everything depends on that. So something is not happening, you know, ethically according to your views or morally according to your views, that affects our health, right? So this also matters, spiritual wellness. Then the next comes physical wellness. So usually when we say about wellness and well-being, we just think about this part. Right, seeing our doctor regularly and getting our screenings, no screenings done, 
keeping hydrated, exercising regularly, sleeping regularly, you know, at the right time, eating healthy food. These are the general things come to our mind when we say about wellness. This is just one part of wellness. This is just physical wellness. As I told, like we have other well, you know, parts of wellness as well. Now, just quickly, we'll have a mini assessment. Okay, ask yourself, how often do you exercise for 30 minutes each week? Now, I need answers in the chat box. How often do you exercise for 30 minutes each week? You can just say two days, three days. How often is that? Sarai is saying once per week. Raji is saying less. Deepa is saying three to four days. Mm -hmm. Every day. Impressive, Nilo. Sarita is saying five days. Yeah, Deepa says would like to do more. Yeah, we'll slowly get into there. Mm -hmm. Tasha is saying every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have many more responses here. Yeah. So the ideal way to have like, you know, an exercise for 30 minutes would be like at least five days a week, four to five days a week. Five days is the ideal, you know, thing. More than that is well and good, but at least five days we need to have this. Now, how much water do you consume daily? How much liters of water, let's say it's in liters or glasses, whichever is comfortable for you. How much water do you consume daily? Eight glasses, 1.5 liter, three by fourth of a liter. We'll have to work on it. Raji, two liters. Poonima saying eight glasses. Aha, really? Two glasses a day? Priya is saying eight glasses, one liter. Mm -hmm. Three to four liters, Zipa, if you're really thirsty. Mm -hmm. No tea doesn't count. It's just water. 15. Yeah, Linda is saying seven milk glasses. Oh, Sarah is saying I'm bad, not enough. Probably one glass a day, Sarah. We'll have to do much work on that. Selma is saying three glasses. Sarita is saying three cups tea. Tea is not counted here. <laughs> Nasimat is saying three cups. Yeah. So the ideal way to have water is at least six to eight glasses per day or 1.5 to two liters per day. At least the minimum amount is that. Okay. Slowly we'll work on it. Yeah. And how many fast food meals you eat per week? Which means how you know how many days in a week you eat outside or eat unhealthy? Ah, here we are getting some interesting answers. None, zero. Mm -hmm. Daddy is saying once a month, that's fine. Christine once, Deepa once, hardly any. Oh, we have many more of well <laughs> practicing wellness people here. I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a pretty good count here. I'm impressed. Now, what's your favorite thing to do in your free time? What's your favorite thing to do in your free time? What's your hobby? Gardening, painting, painting. And do you do that often? Do you get that time to do? Whenever you get time, do you do that? Mm -hmm. Priya is saying she makes time. Yeah, that's wonderful. And how much sleep do you get each night? Oh, Nasima's favorite thing is sleep itself. That's interesting. Six to seven hours, seven to eight hours, eight to nine. Mm -hmm. Less than five hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, almost like eight hours. That's a good count. Yeah. So, likewise, you could have an assessment on yourself. At least once a week, you, you should do this assessment. Whether I am, you know, exercising right, whether I am drinking the right amount of water, whether I am, you know, doing what I like to do because that also matters. And your sleep, all these things you can make short notch 
short, short thing and then try to have a follow up on yourself. Now coming to the next type of wellness that is social wellness. Now what does social wellness mean? It's examining your relationship, the relationship with your, you know, close family members or your friends, whatever it is. How much, how do you interact with others? And how much you are happy to interact with others and how much you are good in maintaining regular contact with your closed ones. All this matters or comes under social wellness because living in harmony with the environment and others also matter to keep you good and well dealt. Then the next is emotional wellness. Now this also we almost speak about last week also we had talked about mindfulness and before that also we were talking about stress managing stress all these things so these matters comes under emotional wellness that is managing your stress prioritizing your goals what do you actually want to do so that you will be satisfied you will be contented with yourself with your life that matters that is the type of emotional wellness that you need to develop because it helps to develop resilience towards the external stress that is building up also, it helps to build our self-worth and self-esteem. So how can we build up this emotional wellness? That's what we had talked last week completely about mindfulness. So mindfulness is a pretty good way to have a proper emotional wellness in yourself. Yeah, so these are the types of wellness that we need to focus on when we say about wellness, right? So what are the things that you can do? in order to take care of yourself. Now, you can substitute fast food. So, pretty less count of fast food, so I won't be talking much about this because, you know. And getting a massage. When I say massage, like it's like if you are liking it or if you need that care, that warmth, you know, you can go for the massage. Or you can try a new herbal tea or you can start journaling, you know, listing out things that you prioritize you want to take care of in yourself the changes that you want to make in your life all these things or even gardening which many of you are already doing now how we can adopt wellness in daily life short short tips the first thing is to have a deep breath so these tips like you know you can do whenever and wherever possible right taking a deep breath going for a walk eating a new veggie or a new healthy thing right and going to bed early so these are some small tips which you can bring in your daily life and at your workplace how can you build the wellness or how can you build self-care you can always pack a nutritious and delicious lunch for yourself so that you eat right on time and you eat right things okay and you can drink more water you can set goals for yourself to complete in that particular day within a particular time frame so that it does not stress yourself much. And creating an ergonomic workspace so that your position is right and your posture is right so that your joint health is maintained well. Then the next is wearing your favorite clothes. So does this matter, wearing favorite clothes? Have you ever noticed the difference when, you know, whenever you wear your favorite clothes, you sense a feel of happiness in you. Okay, Raji is saying it's a myth. Veronica is saying yes. Yeah. So wearing favorite clothes personally in my experience it's like you know a refreshing thing for me so it could be the texture of the clothes you know it could be the color of the clothes everything matters which keeps you pleasant and the next is socializing with co-workers so that you feel like going to the workplace right you need to have someone you know caring or someone to care the workplace someone you you know you really can deal with so that you can make that workplace efficient as well and some things that you can do like this are, these are some professional things like asking for a feedback of yourself so that you can improvise yourself that reduces the stress level and also requesting some time off 
So whenever you need a break, just go for it. Do not overburden yourself. Yeah. And then the next thing I would say is decorating your desk. So with whatever things you like to do, like, you know, some sort of, um, what to say, like pictures or some sort of uh, materials or uh, which, which you like or some pictures, whatever it is, you can just decorate your desk so that it makes you feel like, you know, you are with, you are at your good place or a favorite place. And if ever you are getting some break, you can listen to your favorite music or you can just go for a walk or, you know, you can just do journaling or writing or painting, whatever you are interested in, in those short breaks to make things interesting. And accept your mistakes whenever it's happened. So that makes us feel, you know, very grounded and also that corrects ourselves and also that builds confidence in us. So. Try to accept the mistakes that happen at the workplace. It's okay to happen, right? And learn to be at present. That, that is by being mindful. So keep this thing in mind. Whenever you need to help others, you need to start by helping yourself first. So that's why self-care is very much important. Why is self-care important for women? What, what are your opinions on that? Why do you think self-care is important for women? I keep asking for others, lots of responsibilities, looking after family. Mm -hmm. And do you think like women really prioritize their wellness? or, you know, their self-care. Uh, Nikki is saying a lot of the time we are looking after everyone else. Mm -hmm. No, it's so sad. Yeah. So why I am focusing on the self-care for women is because usually and generally women neglect their self-care because they think that it is unnecessary drama it feels like it's a method to run away so whenever you are taking care of yourself you're doing something for yourself sitting down and writing about you know something or journaling or whatever it is it feels like you are running away from your responsibilities we tend to feel like that because of the societal you know values and other things so whether it be in home, whether it be in office, or whether it be in the whole society, usually women neglect their self-care because of this. But by self-care, it just means that you have to focus on yourself where you are lagging behind or what should be your focus at that particular moment. So if you are feeling low, that should be your focus at that moment not you know thinking about others or not doing other things right so when i say self-care it just simply means spending some me time spending some time with ourselves taking a break from the surrounding people or taking a break from the ongoing all the other activities or all the overwhelming emotions and looking after your own mental physical and emotional needs it is very, very, very crucial to keep your life in control. So it is very much essential to have that self-care. So it won't take much time. It's just spending time with yourself, taking care of yourself, right? What if not, it could lead to serious problems like, you know, anxiety, depression, or mental health problems in the future if you are just accumulating this amount of stress without taking care of yourself. And also, it could lead to chronic diseases. So, admit that self-care is not selfish. And always be there for yourself just the way you are for your best friend. So, whenever your friends or someone needs help, you'll be there for them, right? With all your heart, with all your time, with all your space, you'll be there for them. So, likewise, just be there for yourself. Okay? This is the thing that I want to tell today to everyone. I hope this session helped. So slowly we'll move 
on to yoga. Thank you so much. Oh, one second. Yeah. So, but before that, like, I would like to briefly introduce what Nerva is all about to all of you who are new here. So at Nerva, we are focused on making you healthy inside out. And our mission is to help you to take a few steps towards a healthy and a happy life. So we give personalized treatment plans based on Ayurveda and yoga for chronic health conditions like menopause, gut, and joint health management. And who is helping you with the journey? It's a unique team of certified Ayurveda practitioners who are experts in their fields and also certified yoga professionals with over 10,000 hours of experience in therapeutic yoga and also caring health coaches to help you with everything that you need during your holistic healing journey with Nerva. And we also have a robust and closely connected community of women across the UK who share a goal of leading a healthy and happy life. And we have recently launched our exclusive Facebook community, Nerva Circle, where we, you know, post our concerns, experiences, all the triumphs with others who understand. So it would be our honor if you could join this part of community, Nerva Circle, in the Facebook. And also we were mentioning about the retreat circle. We had recently launched this retreat. So all the wellness that I was talking about till now is to have, you know, small pieces of things that you take care during your daily life, right? So, but in Nerva retreat, you can experience wellness like never before at world's best results. And it is planning to happen on August 2023, October 23, and February 24. Now let's move on to yoga. So during the practice, as we always say, the practices should be performed slowly with awareness of body and mind. And breathing should be always through nostrils unless instructed otherwise. Do not hold your breath unless it is specifically instructed. And you should end the practices with proper relaxation or cooling down practices. And after the practice, do not take bath or have food immediately just after at least 30 minutes. So for taking the session today, we have Dr. Sony, who's a naturopathy and yoga practitioner and a yoga instructor at Yala. So I wholeheartedly welcome Dr. Sony to take over the session. Thank you so much, Doctor, for that beautiful introduction. So a very good evening to all the beautiful ladies who have joined over here. So today we are going to practice yogic practices for calming down your mind and your body and to get grounded, right? And before that, I just want to make you to know on an important note that if you have undergone any recent surgeries or injuries, kindly avoid the practice or seek advice of your physician and do not practice it. Currently, now you can watch the practices, whichever I'm giving today. If you have any stiffness or limitations in any of your joints or muscles that makes you difficult, kindly avoid those practices. And if you have any severe health complication, kindly do avoid all those practices. So moving on to the next slide. Yeah, so here comes the practices for today, that is yoga for grounding. So before moving on to the practical session, I just need all to switch on to the video so that we can have a very interactive and good session so that I can correct all your postures and enjoy the session. Yeah. So we, we are moving on today for the practice of calming down your body. How to get calm down your body. So yoga is a system that heals your mental fluctuations and also the challenges in your mind, right? Yoga is something which really calms your mind and connect your body and your mind. How to get connected with your body and your mind? It's through the breathing, it's through the stretches, relaxation, and through the meditation. And also this mental chatter, which actually makes us more confused inside. And we are in a very busy world so that we cannot look into ourselves. So actually there is a very calmer and inner ourselves inside our body. 
So today I'm going to make you to understand that your inner self and we are going to look inside of ourselves to go deeper into our inner and calmer self, which you might not be aware of your body and from your mind. Right, because we are all in a very busy world. So with this practice, I just want all of you to make you to focus to yourself, to insight into your calmer mind. Yeah, so let's begin with the practice for today. You can just sit comfortably, closing your legs, keeping your spine along each other. Let the palms face the ceiling. Calm down your mind. Bring your complete awareness towards the breathing. Slowly bring your awareness towards your forehead. You can soften your forehead. Slowly softening your forehead. Bring your awareness towards your scalp. Release all the stuff to your accumulator during this week. Just get out of all the stuff away from your head. Bring your complete awareness towards your shoulders. Release all the pressures, all of your busy timings and schedules. Release all of your responsibilities out of your shoulders. You are going to actually get the inner self and the inner peace with the practice. Let's focus this 20 minutes to our body and spend this 20 minutes for us. Slowly and gently take one deep breath in and slowly take the breath out. Rub your palms. Until you receive the warmth in between your palms. Make it a cup and place it on your eyes, spread it to your forehead, to your scalp, behind your head, your neck. Spread it all over your body. Open your eyes with blinkings. Let's begin the practice. Your breathing and stretch, it's very grounded and very milder series of practices but you have to be focused only in your breathing throughout the stretches. Slowly open up your hands, inhale. Without giving any weight to your hands, keeping your hands much lighter. It should freely flow above your head, up and down. Inhale up. Feel that you're clearing the space outside of your body. Trying to energize the surface of your body. Release it down. Keep your eyes closed and inhale up. Your hands are going beyond your head and your brain. Feel that your thought process are outside. Slow down. 
Do not give any weight to your palms and your hands. Inhale. Up. Exhale. Down. From that slowly inhale. Up. And bring your right palm to behind your right side of your body, twisting your body, bringing your left palm to your right knee. Inhale and exhale. Lift up your hands. Inhale slowly towards your left. Exhale. You should not miss the rhythm. You can inhale to the free flow of movement. Exhale to the right side. Inhale up. Exhale to the left side. Inhale up. Exhale to the right side. One last time, inhale out and exhale to the left side. Slowly lift up your hands. Open up your elbows and put your palms on your shoulders. Now from here, you can gently inhale and exhale. Inhale, turn your body to the left and to your right. Inhale to the right. Exhale to the left. 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 If you feel any dizziness, you can move very slowly or else you can move in a very faster mode. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale and release your Place your palms on your knees. Gently, you can start nodding your head to the left and to your right. Give the moments to your head. Gently nod your head. Do not put the weight on your head. Slowly give free moments. You can give normal breathing. Gently nod your head. Slowly release your hands and your head. Closing your eyes, you can place your left palm on your heart and your right palm above your left. Now slowly feel the energy in your heart by activating your arms and your shoulders and upper leg. Feel your heart energy being activated in the rush of blood. Now slowly push your heart energy to your pelvic region. Push it to your pelvic region. Release your hands. Let's give the stretch to your pelvic region. Slowly and gently come to the standing position. Spread your legs two and a half feet apart. Now slowly placing your palms on your knees and gently give the forward fold and exhale. Feel the stretch over here. Yeah, feel the stretch and hold it. Eh? 
gently hold it. Give normal breathing and lift up your body. From here, bring your legs together. You can fold your one leg and place it in the root of your thigh. Yeah. Bring your hands in the mask. Bring your hands in the mask in front of your chest. Focus a single point on the wall. Focus a single point on the wall. Firmly place your right feet on the floor. The feet on the floor, you can firmly place it. And slowly release your hands and your legs. Gently onto the other side. Fold your opposite leg and place it in the root of your thigh. Bring your hands in the mask. And hold it. Focus a single point on the wall. is to release the overthoughts and fluctuation and to bring the awareness and concentration and slowly release your hands and your legs. Now let's move on to the opposite side by folding your legs, placing it in the root of your thigh, bringing your hands in the mask heart. Try focusing on a single point on the wall. And gently close your eyes for just three seconds. Close your eyes for just three seconds. Yeah, you will lose the balance. Just for three seconds, hold your, close your eyes. One, two, and three. Yeah. Release your hands and your legs. You can fold your opposite leg and place it in the root of your thigh. Bring your hands in the mask. Focusing a single point on the wall. Close your eyes just for three seconds. One, two, three. Very good. Release your hands. Yes, we will lose the balance. Because it's the control of your mind with closing your eyes. Beautiful. Let's move on to the next practice. Come to the seated position. These are all the very important practice of vagal nerve stimulations. Yeah, we are going to give the vagus stimulation. Take your both fingers. You can go just catch hold your ears, the outer border of your ears, your outer ears, and try to press it. Close your eyes and press it. This is an excellent refraction point where all the nerve endings happen in your ears. Pressing this will refresh your brain, your mind, and your body. Continue pressing from the Top and till the bottom for five times. Press with your fingers from the top of your ears till the bottom of your outer ears. Yeah, press it. You come closer so that it will be more visible for you. Just try pressing it. Yeah, just try pressing it. With your fingers, just press it to the border of your ears. You close your eyes and enjoy that stimulation. Yeah. Release your hands and feel that sensation in your ears and close your eyes.
Now slowly bring your both palms in front of your face. Now cover your face and put your head weight onto your palms without giving any pressure to your hair. Gently put your head weight onto your palms. Cover your eyes. And be there and hold over there. Hold it for 10 seconds. Do not bear your weight of your head on your neck. We are actually giving relaxation to your neck and relaxing your head. Hold it for another 10 more seconds. Bear the weight of your head onto your palms. Feel that effect into your body. Feel the darkness which is spreading inside to your inner self and your body. Absorb the darkness into your mind and your body. Feel the calming effect in the darkness. Try to scan your inner self in this darkness. Your complete head, your brain, your eyes inside. Now your heart, your each organs, your lungs, your stomach, your kidney can just take a scan of your each organs by viewing inside. Slowly release your hands. Release your hands, relax in your neck, observe the weight on your head. Now slowly take one deep breath, which is very essential for the grounding. Fill your lungs and fill your abdomen and release Now we are going to stimulate the vagus nerve on your abdominal area. Take your both palms. Just keep your palms very freely without any tightness. It should be very lighter. And give the tapping to your abdominal area. Just give the light and mild tapping without any pressure on your palms. Tap it to the side of your head. Tap it to the center portion of your abdomen. Slowly give it semicircular tapping effect. You can just tap it and feel your abdominal layer. The layer of the skin. The abdominal fat you can feel with the tapping. Feel that and give the tap. Continue the tapping. We can increase the moments in tapping. Increase the number of tappings. Just for five more seconds, increase the speed of tapping. Increase it. Increase it and release. Release your palms and close your eyes. Feel the energy inside of your palms. Feel that high energy and blood flow in your palms and your after. Gently take a deep breath in. Now slowly lie down on the mat, spreading your legs and your hands apart. Lie down comfortably. Now slowly from there, you can inhale 
you lift up your both hands up and slowly fold your left leg and catch hold your knees. Exhale, release your leg and bring your hands up. Let's move to the other side. Inhale, catch hold your knees. Exhale, release it up. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, one last time, inhale, and exhale. From that, you can release your hands to the side, close your eyes. And take one deep breath. Now from here, we are going to activate your chakras and each of your body by giving the movements to your each body part. First, give the movements to your toes, gentle up and down movements, very small movements. Now your ankles, continue the ankle movements. Your toes and your ankles continuously give up and down movements. Feel the shaking of your body. Feel the shaking of your body. You can shake your body from your head. From your head. Give the shaking of your body. Your feet is moving up and down. And feel the shaking of your body. Yeah, release. Now again, you can start with your feet, your toes, give up and down moments and slowly feel the shaking of your body and release. Gently roll your ankles three times of clockwise and three times of anti-clockwise and release it down. Now slowly observe your breathing. Now slowly, let's move on to the next practice of relaxation. You can gently bring your awareness to the breathing, only to your breathing. Just coming down your mind and stopping all the thoughts which is running inside your mind. The only medium through which we can reach our inner soul and connect our body and mind is the breathing. Through that medium, we can just breathe in and breathe out. Take the breath in and out. Take it in and out. Just give your complete effect and give the breathing, which is the powerful tool 
to get yourself into a calmer self. Continue the breathing for another 10 rounds. Take the breath in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Take the breath in and out, take the breath in and out. Once again, take the breath in and out. Yeah. Allow the body to rest completely on the mat. Keep your entire body relaxed and give the floating effect to your body. Feel that your body is completely rusting and away from the mind. Do not give any single strain to your physical body. Feel the lightness. Slowly releasing your body, giving a good stretch to your whole body. That is your, you can raise up your arms, stretch your legs, your hip and your head. And gently turn your body to one side and come to the seated position, keeping your eyes closed. Keep your spine long eater. Now we are going to give the chantings for three times to fix this grounding into your body. From your lower abdomen, we should give the chanting. You can take one deep breath. Fill your abdomen completely. Wide open your mouth and chant from your lower abdomen the sound. Ah. Open up your mouth widely. And chant completely for two more times. You can take one deep breath in. Ah. One last time, take one deep breath in. Ah. Close your eyes. Feel that calmness all around your head and your body. Gently rub your palms. Place it on your eyes, your forehead, your scalp, behind your head, your neck and spread it all over your body. Open your eyes with blinkings and a very beautiful smile. Thank you and have a very wonderful day to you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Sloney, for that wonderful session. So ladies, I hope you all enjoy today's session. So if you have any doubts, you can put either in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and then ask I, sorry, I only came in towards the end, towards the yoga bit, so I, I missed most of it. It, it, it was really lovely. Um, I enjoyed it. I was just a bit concerned. My um, when it came to the balancing, my I've just had lots of 
recently my left ankles got very weak i wondered if there's anything you could do just to like maybe ankle exercises yes we can have specific ankle strengthening practices maji oh, okay. so have you yeah have you started the plan like do you have the like, personal I, yoga I, sessions yeah i've done the plan with the yoga sessions but i've been really bad i've been very stressed at work and i haven't kept anything up and have forgotten everything i think i need to look back um, at what okay. i needed to do to strengthen the ankle exercises that's okay we can have specific exercises to strengthen the ankle and it's very much needed when you do the balancing poses as well yeah thank you Are there any more doubts? Okay. I hope everyone enjoyed today's session. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Carolina, for those kind words. Well, thank you, everyone. I just saw the chat box. Thank you so much for joining us and keep joining us and keep, you know, keep connected. Thank you so much. So yeah, let's meet next Wednesday then. Till then, take care. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Good night.